The decal is an omnibus model. Omnibus means that the factors comprising the model can be used for more than one purpose, for needs assessment, for instructional design, and for formative evaluation. DECL stands for Delivery, Environment, Content, and Learner, the main factors that comprise student achievement. These factors can be weighted and summed in a linear regression equation, D plus E plus C plus L weighted equals achievement plus some bias or error. DECL is based on Rita Ritchie's adult model of conceptual design, first published in 1986. Let's consider the variables within the DECL. D stands for delivery. Four variables comprise delivery factor. Your assessment should examine the scope the sequence, the strategies, and the presentation of your web course or materials. Consideration of the scope means the big picture of the program course or unit, or its microstructure, as in a workshop, a lesson, or even a single objective. Evaluating the sequence of instruction should examine the ordering of events or activities or their pacing in a course schedule. Your instructional materials should employ strategies, including a media mix and the instructional devices. Consideration of the media mix means the design of the audio, video, and graphics for possible effects on the students. Consideration of instructional devices should include a plan for an asynchronous text discussion in a blog, board, or teleconference. If it's a hybrid, that is web face-to-face uh, -face combination, the evaluator might also look at the amount and quality of whole group instruction, individualized instruction, work embedded instruction, fault-free questioning, constructive answers, partial answers, elaborative interrogation. Regarding the presentation variables, it's recommended to consider tactics, comprising six functions adapted from Gagné's events of instruction. Maintain the attention, secure a response, provide reinforcement, maintain interest, facilitate retention, and assess the performance. Concerning the form of the presentation, consider how the mix of technologies will be encoded by the student using Mayer and Marino's cognitive theory of multimedia learning, Sweller's cognitive load theory, and Mann's attentional control theory of multimedia learning. Regarding learner control, consider the type and amount of learner control, the level of interactions, expository or discovery oriented. The E in DECL stands for environment. There are two variables that consider in the environment, the climate and the setting. In preparation for developing your instruction, you would do well to account for the learner's climate, whether it's K-12, the school, a business, a government, medical, nursing, college, military, and so on. And its setting, would it be characterized online or some kind of face-to-face -face and online? The C in DECL stands for content. Three variables comprise the content factor. In the content domain, your assessment should examine the mental operations required to learn the content, the tasks involved, and the learning domains themselves. Regarding the mental operations required to learn the content, consider the requirements to select and focus attention, student expectations, and guidance provisions. Is there time for retention, to organize, to rehearse for storage, and retrieve and use? Finally, there should be advice about learning transfer through lateral, vertical, or problem solving, or creative thinking activities. Regarding the tasks involved, it's best to consider everything you can as the basic skills that are assumed, any gender or cultural concerns. Vocational aspects and personal skills, such as the time management or goal setting, should be considered. Concerning learning domains involved, it may be good to know the extent of the motor and intellectual skills, verbal information learning, and cognitive strategies to uh, augment or supplant learner precepts. 
Finally, for content, consider the buy-in factor in the content, perhaps more accurately called the axiological variable. The L in DECL stands for learner. In the learner domain, attitude can have a direct effect on learner performance in certain learning tasks. Attitudes are the likes and dislikes with roots in social, emotional, behavioral, and cognitive experiences. Attitudes can also be value-laden, such as moral or religious beliefs, school pride or work ethic, self-concepts such as academic, personal, or professional, or motivational goals, interests, and perseverance to. The capacity of the learner relates to an innate ability as opposed to achievement. That's a competence variable. The definitions of capacity includes intellectual abilities such as verbal, mathematical, artistic, and social, as well as cognitive such as perceiving, remembering, thinking, apprehending, sorting, and utilizing information, and physiological such as perceptual development and motor dexterity development. Regarding demographics, some evaluators like to collect demographic data to apply to their data interpretation. Data shows differences among learner performances when the subjects are categorized on the basis of such variables as age, their sex, their cultural background. Competence is the result of conscious activity, either a learning experience or another life event. Competence includes prerequisite skills, such as information processing skills, basic skills, content prerequisites, and experiential backgrounds, such as family, leisure time, social, vocational, educational background. It's all a matter of emphasis. Graphical representations of a deco for a new course can illustrate the real emphasis in the course. Here we can see three courses, or we'll talk about three courses with a different emphasis in each, a psychological emphasis, a business emphasis, or something called the MBO, Management by Objectives emphasis, and a sociological emphasis. The predominant emphasis in traditional K-12 and post-secondary education, although the curriculum is preset, especially in K-12, is a strong psychological focus on the learner. Learners are grouped by grade level according to their competence, their capacity to learn, and their attitude toward learning, as well as their demographic information, information such as sex and age and social and cultural background. The predominant emphasis of corporate, vocational, or military training is predetermined by the setting and the climate of the sponsoring organization. The emphasis is clearly environmental and hereafter referred to as the MBO or Management by Objectives emphasis. Let's have a look at a graphical representation or illustration of the decal. Here we see four interlocking circles. A member from elementary school, they call it a Venn diagram. Uh, each of these uh, represents some of the factors that we've been talking about. Take a minute before you run the tape ahead, or the, your, your file ahead, to label these. Uh, and, be, and then we'll move ahead. So just take a second to try to label w what the factors were in DECL. What's the purple part in there? Where does the, there's an arrow, as you see where the, at the nexus where all of the circles meet. What does that, just speculate on what that might be. Okay, let's see how we did. So there's nothing really new here. You can see the size of the circles. I want to draw your attention to the size of the circles. They're balloons, if you like, that they all intersect, but they're all the same size. Okay, so decal really is the delivery, the environment content, and learner factors that can be weighted with 
uh, larger and smaller circles, that there, the arrow points to the nexus of those circles, which is achievement, learner achievement, and that is the goal of instructional design, not motivation. Okay, not motivation. In fact, as Richard Clark, and we'll see in our uh, our um, readings, clearly has pointed out and that there's an inverse correlation with uh, achievement, mostly because it's we tend to look at multimedia as entertainment, not as education. And so people are, I mean, adults and children are looking for the game to play and the instruction to avoid. Okay, so this is the deco. This is what we're going to be working with for in three different ways if for our needs assessment. So you're going to look at the needs assessment. You're going to tell me about these, these factors in your position paper. We're going to also be looking at this particular deco model for instructional design uh, at the point where telling us about how you're going to uh, arrange the instruction. Uh, is it going to be included all on the web or partly on the web or in the classroom or taken home for homework or is it going to be, uh, will it be from some of them on mobile devices and so on. Okay, and uh, also in the formative evaluation of your instructional materials where your experts and your peer assessors will be asked to evaluate your your particular instructional materials based on these factors, the DECO factors. Okay, so we're going to move on now to the next topic.